Now, early election results in Zambia show opposition leader Akainde Ichilema ahead in a tight, uh, tense race, while the National Electoral Commission has urged people to wait for the final official results to avoid any unrest. Now, the first set of results announced from 15 of the country's 156 constituencies has Ichilema with a narrow lead of around 61,000 votes over President Edgar Lungu. The commission says it will update the results as votes from the constituencies are tabulated and expects to announce the final results by Monday. And for more on this, let's bring in Farai Muvuti, a senior analyst at the South African Times. It's good to have you, Farai. Uh, now, let's talk about uh, some issues we witnessed uh, some hours ago. Vote counting uh, was paused then. Uh, and party agents complained about announcement of unverified results. And of course, uh, as you noted in the preamble there, uh, we also hear of uh, an early lead by uh, Mr. Hichilema, uh, you know, as well. So what are your thoughts about these uh, narratives we're, we're getting? Well, so far, of course, uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, and it's the Southern African Times. So thank you. <laughs> South, South African Times would be a different paper. So we have the South African Times. Yes, so what's currently happening, of course, is that the first 15 constituencies have been have been counted. And the lead currently uh, uh, is, uh, uh, though marginal uh, it may be, but it is indeed Hichilema, who is the leader of the opposition party. Uh, what we're seeing, of course, is uh, that uh, uh, the constituencies uh, that, are, that, are, that have already been counted appear to be perceived uh, strongholds of the ruling party, which is a patriotic front led by uh, President Lungu. So the accession here is that due to the to, to the uh, previous election being a very uh, uh, what the, mar the the margin in terms of difference was uh, on, on the basis of about a hundred thousand. The assumption here would be that uh, this this would not be the case in this particular instance if one is to consider the lead. Uh, but what I find problematic and quite faulty about these perceptions is that we're talking about fifteen constituencies out of one hundred and fifty six, and equally we ha we have a huge vote vote uh, turnout uh, larger than we had in the previous election. So it's, it still remains very close to core. So the perceptions, in as much as they may be enthusiastic towards and leaning towards the opposition narrative, I just think it's too close to core. All right then, uh, Farai, what, uh, with internet restrictions still in place, uh, how will that impact on the counting that is taking place at the moment? Well, of course, uh, uh, the question would be, um, currently the, a, a human rights, uh, an, an, an NGO entity has already launched the case at court, and the court seems to have had a ruling around that, um, ordering that they be reopened. Uh, to the question about uh, whether it will have an impact on the, the transparency of the voting itself, it's yet to be seen. I do not, I don't think that uh, it, it's, it's now down to whether there is evidence to that effect. So far, the counting is sa to, the satisfact to the satisfaction rather, of the opposition party as well as the ruling party. There are no um, sessions that there is uh, any suggestion of any uh, hindrance on, in terms of the, co the context of uh, uh, transparency. The uh, EU, EU delegation, monitor, the monitoring delegation and the African Union delegation so far considers the election to be uh, transparent as well as peaceful, according to the reports that we've seen in recent in, in recent days. So there is no accession of that. Uh, however, of course, the question would be on the basis of uh, freedom of association and the rights uh, and human rights questions that could be asked. But I do not think it will have much bearing on the uh, transparency as well. Indeed, for right now, if this result still favours uh, Mr. Hichilema, do you think Mr. Lungu uh, will cede uh, power without challenging the outcome? Uh, it is still a close call, uh, as you mentioned earlier. In indeed. Uh, well, of course, this, this is the fear of many, uh, of many when it comes to this particular election. But Zambia has a very solid history of being able to transfer power where there is need to transfer power. Uh, the Patriotic Front uh, equally comes in as uh, as uh, an anti uh, government that uh, itself uh, used to contest uh, elections and lost quite con uh, quite a number of times uh, under the leadership of Ma Michael Satter, and they would contest these issues in the courts. I would imagine that in their own tradition, they would continue along that path. So that if there is any contestation, it should be done through legal processes rather than any other. Uh, 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 framework that is outside the confines of the constitution provided for by the people of Zambia. Um, so I, I think it's yet, yet, of course, these are, these are assumptions that are made, but historically this has not never been the case for Zambia.
it's pretty much a, a, a peaceful country. But of course, when uh, when it does face electoral processes, they tend to be on, 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 on all parties. They tend to respect the rule of law in that regard. But it's yet to be seen. Yeah, it seems to be, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see, don't we? Uh, let's talk about the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ. You know, what's your assessment, you know, of how uh, they're currently handling uh, matters? And is there any possibility uh, that they could cause anarchy in the country by any chance? Um, well, so far, just basing it on just the reports, as I had mentioned, that I alluded to like, earlier of the, of the uh, EU delegation as well as the African Union. There seems to not be uh, that sort of assumption. Um, in fact, if anything, they appear to be have to have been transparent so far and appear to continue to be so. Uh, they have a 72-hour window, um, which uh, I think c concludes Sunday, between Sunday and uh, perhaps Monday uh, at, at the latest. Uh, I think that's when we can begin to see if that will be read to a, a further delay uh, without any substantive justification. We'll, we'll, we'll yet to see if that will indeed create anarchy. Uh, but I think uh, what's quite unique about this particular election is that you've not seen such a huge voter turnout. Uh, I think the last time it was seen, it's comparative to 1991. So it's quite a big deal. Now, the question would be, have, have, are they prepared for such a huge capacity in terms of the, co the context of the, uh, the numbers that have shown up to vote? So it's going to be a, a very, very... Um, uh, I suppose, a period in which we get to examine the electoral strength of the institutions of Zambia, but we'll equally be able to see if they're able to uh, cope in, in, in the fashion uh, that uh, stands up to the scrutiny of their own defined democracy. Indeed, for right now, the, Mr. Hichilema has been described as a serial challenger over time. Uh, is he about to get his dues if this result stays the way it is at the moment? Yes, indeed. Uh, he has. Uh, this will be the sixth election that he contests in. If he is uh, successful, he would indeed become the uh, the president of Zambia for uh, leading his uh, party that had lost power uh, um, uh, as a result of uh, issues relating to privatization, corruption, and so forth. So it will be quite interesting to see that how he intends to tackle some of these issues. If he does win, of course, some of the uh, uh, aspects that are he proposes, of course, are to restructure the debt, quickly looking at uh, uh, market, uh, re, uh, re, re centering Zambia to be uh, um, a global market player uh, by virtue of uh, restructuring deals in the COPA industry, which is 70% of its current uh, 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 export uh, uh, source. So it will be quite interesting to see how he does so. But as I said before, it's quite early. It's too early to call. PF uh, still has quite a, a number of considerable ground that it could gain. Uh, but uh, to answer your question directly, it would be indeed um, a, a testing time considering the state of the country the, in, in the context of the economy and equally uh, the uh, questions around privatization, which is equally accused of uh, uh, by, the, uh, by the ruling party currently uh, to have been one who uh, betrayed the confidence of the country that we want. Now, Farai, we are getting reports regarding uh, some of the major contenders, you know, uh, claiming victory even before uh, counting is concluded. What are you hearing on ground, you know, or from your sources over there? And is that appropriate if that's the case? Indeed, there, there has been the instances where uh, both parties in terms of the Patriotic Front and the UNDP, uh, those, its followers uh, were celebrating in certain constituencies that, of course, their, their, their party has won, some even going as further as announcing and preempting the outcome. And, uh, and in, indeed, as the Electoral Commission has uh, excelled that, uh, expelled, to, to, to expelled such uh, suggestions purely because uh, it does risk the, the, the potential of instability uh, as it will steer a, 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 a perception of, of a be it a win or a loss, which may which uh, may drive the country to the brink of violence, which I think has uh, the intent is to avoid. Uh, and so far, the sort of uh, the announcements that are coming out from the uh, the bodies that are responsible in this instance, the ECZ, it's arguing that no, let let us not uh, await for the elections to be announced by this particular institution, as to avoid that particular the issues of instability as well. In, indeed, Farai Mavuti, senior analyst, South African Times. So many thanks for your thoughts on uh, Zambia elections.